Hello everyone, hope you're feeling good, and if you're not feeling good, maybe listening to some units feeling good or bad will make your day better. I'm Mecha, and we're going to be discussing how fun these units are to use. And of course, joining me as always for unit field discussions is the only professor in unit Felicus, Professor Popper. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. It was nice to get the first and only degree in unit field. <laughs> yes. It has done absolutely nothing for my life. Yes. Nice, nice. <laughs> there, there, there are no jobs in that field, unfortunately, except okay. these videos. But when but... there are, you'll be the only yes. one uh, able to get it because of artificial scarcity. So this is just, yes. we're just playing the long game here. Oh yeah, the long con for in twenty years when I start manipulating the job market just for, sure. for me. Yeah, yeah. It's, but if you thought about it, don't even try. I've already minted the first NFT of this tier list, so don't even bother try. First NFT. Yeah. Now we're gonna turn Fire Emblem into a. In 25 years, Fire Emblem will be the new Call of Duty. New yes. game every year, microtransactions on every map. I I'm excited for it. Yeah. Also, important for unit feels that we have some units remaining to tier. Uh, thanks again for everyone who has submitted characters on my Patreon. The characters you see here on the list already on good, mid, and bad feel were tiered in the previous two videos. You can find the playlist in the description, hopefully. And the to be done is the units that we'll be doing today. Sami is filling in for a spoiler character that I'll be filling in later just to make the beginning of the video spoiler friendly but eventually there will be character recruitment spoilers of yeah. fire emblem engage uh, but yeah this is what we have uh, remaining are we ready to get into it bobber oh oh yes i'm always ready to get into unit feel all right so uh kagetsu is the banger i saved for this episode kagetsu i think is pretty well widely known to be the best unit in fire emblem engage at least when it comes to raw statistics and Everyone is just compared to Kagetsu, and everyone is compared unfavorably to Kagetsu, and that kind of hurts for everyone else. But for Kagetsu, it's got to feel good. It's like a nice ego boost, even though, you know, I'm not actually the unit Kagetsu, but it feels good using a unit that you know is good for some reason. Like, there's, for me, there's a large overlap between good unit and good unit feel. It's not perfect, but it is there. And uh, the, the, what I like about Kagetsu is that even if you don't engage with the reclass system, and he's stuck in a, probably the worst promoted class in the game, Swordmaster. He's still pretty good, and then he just gets better no matter what you turn him into, so he almost can't go wrong there. Like, some units get ruined in their unit field because you put him in a class that they don't really fit into, and the, that's the bad part of experimentation. You get into a class that they're not really good at, and then it's just kind of... Not only are you using a unit that doesn't feel as good as you want it to be, but you also know they could have been better. But for Gagetsu, he's good in everything, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I used Gagetsu in my playthrough uh, as a filler, when he joined, because I didn't know just how good he was, he just was kind of nice. And then I benched him, and then I benched other people, and I brought Kagetsu back, and he back, and he was still insanely good. So for me, Kagetsu was just very, very fun to use. I made him a wyvern. I gave him like Leaf, and then later on I changed some things around. But I think he's always been uh, having fun with Leaf. Uh, Leaf is a bad feel emblem because Leaf sometimes makes you worse, and he doesn't have the easiest combos to get kills with. But once I realized you can use momentum with Leaf, and it, I think it applies to all four of his hits, that's when it really clicked, and then I realized it was... Damn. That's, uh, that was a nice, fun little player phase assassination. So I had a lot of fun with Kagetsu. I would put him in good feel. What about you? I really I really enjoy uh, Kagetsu. I, I think like you, when I first got him, I was like... You know, he's good. He looks pretty good. Uh, so I'm sure he's fine. And then like... He just kind of keeps going. He keeps going and keeps going and he never stops and i don't know i think he he hits that sweet spot where i i like i don't know is he considered the strongest unit in the game i haven't kept up with like the tier list tier i know lists. some people think seed was oh. better and there might be like one or two other characters that are arguably better because of some other kind of utility but yeah he's among the top three at least for yeah. most people okay so i think he hits the sweet spot where like He's not completely game trivializing, you know, like something like, I don't know, like a Harkin. Mm -hmm. He's not that powerful, but he's still like really strong out of the box. And he has all the benefits we talked about of engaged characters of like just coming with like 9,000 SP when he joins. And you can just do whatever you want with him right from the beginning. And he, uh, he comes at kind of a sad time for like the engage rings that you do have mm -hmm. so like kind of it takes a little while before you can start super experimenting with what classes to send them in uh but it also doesn't matter because i don't know 
Is Swordmaster really that terrible? I have no idea. I think Run Through is funny. I didn't keep him in Swordmaster long term, but uh, he'll do well in it, I suppose, mm -hmm. long enough. Uh, I know. So, I know. I, if it's, I know if it's super terrible, but it definitely is a worse class than almost anything you could turn him into. Yeah, I gave him a Tiki in my <laughs> playthrough. Also, not realizing how broken Tiki was, I was just like, "Oh, I got, I got Kagetsu here as a filler unit. I now have a filler emblem ring. Let me give it to him." And then I was like, "Oh, hey, he doesn't. He gets perfect level ups now, and just full heals, and has a million defense." And gives people revival stones now. I know that's not him, but that was my experience with him. So it's like, this guy's ridiculous. I mean, the only thing that's better than a broken unit is a broken unit that makes other units broken, right? Right. And then also, I just like his battle quotes of like <laughs> killing someone and just being like, "Will you go out with me?" <laughs> like, no, I think I think we're past that stage. To get to us a very like modest personality, I think one of the more grounded ones in this game, like in a game of full of silly clowns, it's just like. He's just kind of funny, and he's just kind of awkward. He has like that convo with someone about he thinks that kissing means a greeting or something like that. I forgot exactly what it was. Do you know, do you remember the convo yeah. I'm talking about? Uh, mm, I don't no, remember who it was with. Sure. It's, it's a support, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. With some kind of dude, he's like, "Oh, we should kiss to say goodbye because that's what we do over here." I think that's what I remember. He is. I like that he's from not totally not Japan because he's from the east and he eats like onigiri all the time and he has eats with chopsticks or whatever. It's very yeah. <laughs> not subtle, but because of that, it's very very funny as well. Uh, I like him so much, and uh, he's also he's got a funny backstory too. Have you unlocked his backstory yet? No, I've I've uh, I've only looked at the supports that I got mm -hmm. in my first playthrough. I haven't like gone and investigated too much otherwise. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So I'm not super familiar with a lot of the characters, like, deep backstories. I won't spoil it for you, but it is worth looking into, I'm sure. I, I said funny, I mean, like, actually interesting, especially mm -hmm. within the confines of Engage. Yeah. Uh, I'll throw him in a good feel. Because he's feeling good. Uh, next is Bunet. Is it Bunet or Bunet? Do you remember what they say in the game? I, I have no idea. I'm going to go Bunet. Okay. Just because, I don't know. I, I, I like I like Bune more because if it's wrong, it's the more annoying wrong. <laughs> so. Fair enough. When I first got Bune, I was like, "Oh, this guy kind of tanky. I can like send him off to this corner of the map and have him ride it by himself, and hopefully, I can beat this desert map before more reinforcements show up." And then I realized that this guy is not especially proficient at beating enemies quickly. He can take a hit, all right, because he's in a great knight class, but he doesn't do a whole lot. And then later. I looked into his personal stats and I realized, oh, his defense actually isn't that high. He's being carried by the Great Knight class. Like it's like he has almost as much defense as like Louise ten thousand chapters ago. And then most appeal kind of vanished from me, and I don't think I ever deployed him again. I I, I sent him to a, do a task. I had to get him help because he failed at it, and then I didn't have anything to do for him to further. So from the little experience I have from Bunet, just from that alone, I have to say bad feel. But that said, I know that if I were to go into the game again and play with him and find something funny for him to do, I would probably enjoy it a lot. Like, for example, that's the same with like all these units. You could ask me the next day if I've used a unit that I hadn't the last time, and I would put on put him higher. Like, right now, I'm really enjoying using Anna right now, even though I put her in bad field. So just, that just shows how, like, personal and um, temporary these ratings are. But I'll just keep it the same as it is. But I'm just saying, right now for me, Brunet is bad, but if I got him to work tomorrow, I would throw him in good. That's how it is for me. But right now, for me, he's bad, based on my experiences. What about you? Yeah, He joins in a weird chapter. Chapter 12 is it's funny, because when you beat the game, and you're like, it's scrolling through all the maps, it tells you not only how many turns, but how much time you spent in each map, and it's like, <laughs> chapter 10, 1 hour, 10 minutes, chapter 11, 40 minutes, chapter 12, 3 minutes. It's a... Uh... He joins on like a bizarrely easy chapter. Like it's that desert map. Yeah. And because you were like, I got to beat him before the reinforcements show up. And then the reinforcements just don't show up and you just beat the map. <laughs> they did uh, show up for me, but I played on hard. They, did, they, they didn't show up for me either. Um, and then when I went back through the game, they just still didn't show up. Oh, what? I, I, said, they, so, I said they did show up for me. I was, I was, I was oh, that they slow. did. Because I was using Bunei. Oh. <laughs> okay. I used Bunei, but I just ran him full speed into the quicksand. <laughs> Um, this game's sand is weird, but I don't know. Bune is like, for me, he's kind of like what everybody else thinks Isadora is. <laughs> it's like, 
shows up and does like a very minor thing, which is not die on the joining map, and then disappears. Which, you know, not dying is nice, but like, it's also a route map, not a don't die map. So he's not super useful. So then I put him on the bench. But apparently he likes to cook. Mm-hmm. So that's, I guess, ooh, an, oh, another Fire Emblem character with a food gimmick. I oh, know, right? Incredible. I was waiting for that wow. one to show up in this game. Ooh. Yeah. Like, oh, you've got uh, Chloe eats things for gross out humor. And now Bunet's like, oh, I, I'm a chef. Okay. All right. Well, go cook then. But not on the battlefield. Bad feel. <laughs> He's also like he eats weird shit as well. Apparently, yeah. I don't know exactly what. Yeah. I know he like talks about eating bodies and weapons and stuff like that. It's just like oh. that's not even funny. That's just weird, bro. You're just a weird, bro. <laughs> yeah. When I was looking at the uh, when I did my popularity poll for my Iron Man, I was like going off of just the portraits on the on the wiki to like type out their names. And when I got to Bunet's portrait, <laughs> I was actually like. I could not remember who he was. I was like, who is this person? Is this actually a character? You are not the um, only one. I have read posts yeah. of people with the exact same experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, who, in a game full of like brilliant mid-game pre-promotes, you don't want to be the bad pre-promote. He probably is him. the worst of the bunch yeah. in that sense. and Because he joins among a bunch of good ones too. Like He joins with Pandreo and with um, Fogato as well. That's yeah. not helping. Fugato gets like a full cut scene, and then Pedreo just screams in your face, so it's yeah. kind of hard to stand out. <laughs> I cook. Oh, that's great. Go yeah. join the bench yeah. with, with <laughs> Lowen, and who else cooks in Fire Emblem? Like Rebecca or uh, something, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, go eat go eat chocolate with Gaius or something, I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> we'll throw him in bad. Um, yeah. Pendreo, on the other hand, whenever you select him, he barks. <laughs> it does make the game a little hard to play in public with the volume on, but I guess it's a good thing because you probably shouldn't play a game in public with the volume on. It's kind of rude. So in that yeah. sense, I think Pendreo is just providing a public service. And then yeah. he's also a good pre-promote in the same way he gets to his. Like, I think their stats are probably pretty close. They're just in widely different classes, so... It's hard to compare him directly without, like, reclassing one of them into the other class. But, I mean, he's good. For me, it was mostly a staff bot, but every time I used him, I was like, I'm not using this guy optimally, but I don't know enough about the game to do so. But what I'd have him do right now is pretty sufficient, and every now and then, I'd have him, like, use Selica's Warp Ragnarok to do a thing, or do a healing. And that was good enough, and... As I get more familiar with the game, play more on manning, play more on higher difficulties in general, uh, try more combos out, I'll probably find a bunch of combos for... Pendreo. For me, if I had to base it purely of what I have done with him, it'd be mid, because he's just kind of doing utility. Mm. But because I know he's so good, and because whenever I had him do something, it was still, like, it was still clearly very good at it, I'm gonna end up putting him in good, probably. What do you think? Oh, I would definitely put him in good for me. I think in my run, he was probably my best or second best combat unit. Wow. Um, because... Well, that's probably biased towards the magic thing, because I could just not get any magic characters in this game to work, except for Pendreo, um, who, like, is pretty wonderful, because I, like, forged Elfire or whatever, because the steel equivalent weapons in this game are all great, and you'll just run into, like, Marnie or something, <laughs> one-rounder, and then just, <laughs> just start screaming, and you're like, oh my god, I gotta turn this fucking game off before people start staring at me. To be fair, there's a lot of things in this game that kind of make you want to turn it off if you're in public, but that's beside the point. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. So I had a lot of fun with him. I also think this is a game, and this will probably come up with a character a few from now, but brave weapons in this game, like, are okay. Mm-hmm. They're not like their typical absurd selves. No, they're like five except, mites. Like... Yeah. Except for Nova? <laughs> <laughs> which is randomly just better than all the legendary weapons. Because it's like, oh, it's a brave tome that never breaks. So it attacks from two range. And also it's hitting enemy res. So 50 times four. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so just running around the entire final few maps with Pandreo as he just like is nuking enemy after enemy after enemy was pretty incredible compared to like other magic units. Like, I don't know. Ivy mm-hmm. or Clam. It's like running around like I'll hit once for six damage. 
Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I will use Pandreo now. <laughs> it's funny you bring up Nova, because I remember in the late game of Engage, I was getting so many like random weapons with unpronounceable yeah. names that it was hard to keep track <laughs> of. And like I know particularly there was just, there were some I just kept in the convoy for ages because I just forget about getting them because I was getting so many of them. Yeah. And then I remember specifically, I think for the final chapter, I f I like five minutes before my stream started, me and Raisins, we forged one of the S rank weapons just because I had so much resources lying around. And then we still forgot to put it on the character that it needed to be <laughs> on. It's like it was like the S rank knife or something, and we just yeah. set up some kind of convoy chain around the final boss just to get it to someone, <laughs> and still never ended up using it. God, and like Nova is also one of those that just comes so late that I kind of forget yeah. it exists sometimes. But I know it's really good. Uh, I, I had it yeah. on Ivy for a while, and I remember with Ivy, I also had Excalibur or something on her, so it was either doing like twenty five times four, or it was doing fifty times two. There was sometimes there was just no mm -hmm. difference between the two. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, those late game weapons are all really funny because they're like they give you like four S rank knives and they're just all worse than like an iron knife plus four. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like I don't know why they're like this. Um, and then like all the S rank swords are like worse than like the hero's sword, which is <sighs> pay to win. Mm -hmm. Is it is it the hero's sword as in the one you get from linking with heroes? Yeah, the. Yeah the Volkswagen or whatever that's just <laughs> randomly like the most powerful weapon in the game. This gotcha was sponsored by Volkswagen. Yes. We are labeled enemy units. All uh, the people who are like hearing this and are just like, I have got to go beat the prologue of Fire Emblem Heroes now. <laughs> I can't count how many times people have asked me, hey, did you try the Heroes weapons? I was like, no, I don't like Fire Emblem Heroes. I'm not about to start playing it just to change my game experience to an unintended way. Like, yeah. on, I like the vanilla game. <clears throat> I, I, be, I beat the prologue of Heroes four years ago, and I was like, I'm getting something out of that experience. <laughs> Finally, my investment pays off. <laughs> Finally. Anyway, uh, we can throw Pantreo in good. And now, you you all are probably confused why I have a purple extra role here, um, where characters that were from not engaged used to be. And you're about to find out this amazing tech right here. I'm going to put him in a second row. Oh. And now my overlay is only mildly messed oh, yeah. up. Oh, that's hard. Mildly that messed up. There we go. A bopper can't see it because he's looking at my browser, but you guys are getting yeah. the full mecha adjust the thing a little bit yeah. experience. There we go. Okay. I, I hope everyone's jealous. I get the full screen experience. Yeah, the full screen mecha experience. <clears throat> yeah. It's at 120p right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Discord latency. <laughs> All right. Next is uh, Gold Mary. I could probably just straight up drag her in good right now because I think Gold Mary is the. Maybe not the best unit in the game, but by far the funniest unit in the game, unless we're counting like Soren's Bond uh, conversations. I crack up every time Gold Mary opens her mouth and starts talking about how amazing she is. She. I don't know how they did it, because I usually don't like arrogant characters, but Gold Mary is so absurd and so hilarious and makes people like so. What the fuck did you just say kind of reactions that it just makes me laugh every time. And that, that, that bleeds into unit feel very generously. And then on top of that, her combat, it was good enough for me. I didn't use her until I benched a couple of other people, so she was underleveled, but I just randomly changed her into a paladin and then gave her Erika ring and just used twin strikes every now and then. That was good enough. That, that worked out fine. I guess there's one thing that's kind of hurting unit feel and engage is that you... Um, the unit's personalities kind of blend with their engage partners because I think whenever you kill someone with your... Uh, while you're engaged, they take quotes from the emblems rather than themselves. So Gold Mary would use like Erica quotes, and particularly ATA killed a lot of people. But apparently, I have to get stronger so I can beat everyone. It's not an ATA quote; it's a Lin quote, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but it's so it fits ATA perfectly. So that's why I thought it was hers, like all the way through. Uh, but that kind of makes you miss some beats of their personality. But for Gold Mary, I think the point gets across pretty well. So. Yeah, I think Gold Mary is absolutely excellent, hilarious writing, and I would feel there every single time from now on just to hear more Gold Mary being absolutely ridiculous. What about you? Uh, I used Gold Mary on her join map, and then I tried to find space for her on the next map, and then I couldn't, and then she went to the very bottom of the deployment order. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're missing out. Um, I, I know I'm missing out. I've heard, like, so many great things. She feels kind of like... She joins with, like, a big old smash weapon, right? I think so, yeah. I'm she, pretty sure. She also does with like, like four movements or five movements. Which she, is, yeah. 
see, she sort of has this issue where she joins right next to Rosado, and then Rosado gives you a tutorial where it's like, here, go one shot this corrupted worm with yeah. Rosado. Oh yeah, Gold Mary's here. You figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, my bias just kind of was like, I'll use Rosado, who's also a wyvern, and I could make Gold Mary a wyvern because that's how this game works, but also I don't know how it works because it's my first playthrough, so uh, I guess goodbye, but I'm sure you're great, so I don't know. Second playthrough, Gold Mary will definitely be used. Mm -hmm. I had so much trouble finding Gold Mary something to do on a joint map because not only is our mobility awful, but the islands keep changing, like the water keeps going up and down. So you never know where you're going to be able to go in a couple turns. So just moving towards the nearest enemy is not the best way to go always. And I just had her like in a group of units that were on standby in case of reinforcements and or favorable water movements, but it never really worked mm -hmm. out. But thankfully I found a spot for her or else I would have missed out on all the greatness. But yeah. No bopper, I am jealous of you because you're about to learn how fun it is to use Gold Mary in your second yes. playthrough. You still have that ahead of you. Yeah, that just means I have to beat her join map, which is just like the water temple from Binding Blade, <laughs> where, where she's the only one that suffers from it. It's true. Everyone else could just become a flyer and pass by it. She's the only unit in the game yes. who cannot fly over that map if you want her to. Yes. All right, we'll throw her up here. Uh, next up, I have Linda. Now, if you don't know who this is, uh, you might think it was a generic boss in the boat map, and you just <laughs> kill him one round. I've, there is a lot of people who just killed Linda and didn't notice, even <laughs> though he has like, hmm, I don't know if I'm okay with my allegiance. If only I could talk to someone that could change my allegiance. <laughs> He's kind of like that. Uh, <laughs> people hear that and they're just like, wow, that that's really sad. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a you problem, buddy. <laughs> Uh, I think Alir and Ivy can talk to him. Uh, if you're not using mm -hmm. Ivy, then I guess you just kind of forced to use Alir for that. The funny thing is, apparently Linden does not have a single conversation with Ivy for the rest of the game. <laughs> like, no support, <laughs> no nothing. But he can talk to Hortensia, and then they'll mention Ivy. And that's the extent of the interactions between Linden and Ivy, the princess of the country God. that Linden is from. They God, that's that's... That's Kaga tier stuff. Just have a recruitment that like just makes no sense. No, the Kaga would have had like five thousand conversations between the two over the course of three maps, and you, they're all hidden. And if you miss one, you miss them all. <laughs> that would have, that was what he would do. Um, other ways I've heard referred uh, Linden to are walking Thoron Thome and uh, Crit Machine, uh, because his personal lets you get a hundred percent crit apparently. But I've also heard reports that. Even when Linden crits, he doesn't kill the enemy, which is the ultimate bad feel <laughs> because that sounds funny until you realize you have to someone set up the funny combo for you. That's that's not fun. Like if you're gonna get 100% crit, you might as well kill with it. It's yeah. it's weird hearing it because when I hear the words "walking through on tome" and fails to kill with a crit, I gotta wonder how bad his magic is. It can't be that bad, right? It can't be that bad. I don't know. Enemies are pretty tanky in this game. Like they're HP sponges. Mm -hmm. That is true. Like they they got a lot of HP. Yeah. I gotta confess, though, you might have heard me use the words reports, and I've heard, and other people... Our, our intelligence is showing. Yeah, my, my experience is showing, especially. I have never used Linden other than his joining map to, like, throw in one or two guys, mm -hmm. and uh, I can tell that he has more potential than that. I'm definitely down to try a crit build at some point, uh, but I haven't been able to find space on my roster yet on my first playthrough, and my second and third playthroughs haven't reached that point yet, so I have little to no experience with uh, Linden, so I'm probably gonna throw him in mid just because no experience, at least isn't bad experience. Like, I'm sure there's something fun I can do with him. What about you? I use Linden only on the joining map, but there are a couple things in his favor that I think... One, he's like an elderly character that you're recruiting out of hospice. True. And I really like that. It's always cool to see, like, old characters. Like, I'm on the mecha full screen experience. I see Boa way down at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Not for this video. I just want to mention him because that's the kind of feel I get. So, old guys are cool. Uh, he's also, correct me if I'm wrong uh, on this, I'm pretty sure he is the only red unit you recruit in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't think of anyone think so, else yeah. off the top of my head. That might I think be everyone why people else miss it. That's what, that might be why people miss him. I mean, there's a lot of enemies you recruit, technically, right? Because almost all these people you fight at some points, but never yeah. go from red to blue within one map. Yeah, they always either auto-join at the start of a map or they go green. Yeah. Um, because it's like a Fire Emblem staple uh, that I think we've lost a little bit over time as 
I don't know. I don't know if there's like a reason for it. I would almost suspect it's because everybody just wants all the characters anyway. So intelligence systems is like, eh, just don't make them missable because it just makes people mad mm -hmm. when they miss a unit. Uh, but it used to be like even in games in small casts like Sacred Stones, you get like, you know, your core mags and your Amelia's. You get two Myrmidons like, in that one. Yeah. You Joshua, like, where's the where's the early game enemy Myrmidon that you have to recruit from the enemy? That's a classic, and we've know. lost it. Lyndon is carrying the flame, <laughs> which is going to burn out in about eight minutes when he passes away. <laughs> but, but we have a... Uh, yeah, I think those are some good things uh, in Lyndon's favor. Mm -hmm. um, I never used him. He, he yeah. probably sucks, but <laughs> hey, old man, and you got to recruit him from the enemy. That's pretty cool. So you know, that's true. I'll add one more thing in Lyndon's favor. Uh, I don't know if I've referenced this before on this series, but uh, Laponye did a playthrough of Engage, uh, an LTC, but displayed LTC, which means you can grind outside of the story maps and paralogs to get characters to whatever you need them to so you can like one or two turn every map from there in the future. <laughs> and one of the characters that did work, maybe not for the entire game, but for a while, was like Griffin Knight Levin Sword Linden for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he was chosen. Maybe it was the crit rate, but I'm very glad he got an appearance there because I don't know if we're going to see him anywhere else. Uh, oh no! I, I like, Can that be the final LTC of this game until it gets optimized out, please? <laughs> I would hope so. I mean, there's yes. I, there's already a couple of LTCs that probably... Yeah. I mean, if you're going to do an LTC, you don't have time to train a whole lot of people. So, unironically, Linden is probably useful in some capacity there. Yeah. Because you probably don't have 12 good pre promotes in this game. Yeah. Or Especially because it's it's uh, completely free turn-wise to just turn someone into a magic flyer. So Yeah, you don't need to grind them in a weird class or get death blow on them or anything. It's just you need the yeah. SP. And Linden does come with like 2,000 SP at least. That's something in his favor. Yeah. So... At least when it comes to customizability, Linden is one of the better ones for sure. He also joins yeah. around a time where you get a lot of emblem rings back, so you mm -hmm. don't have that problem that, for example, maybe Tamara has, where you have like one or two emblem rings. It's like, oh, <laughs> I heard you don't. <laughs> if you don't want to turn into a bow unit, then what are you gonna do, right? <laughs> with Linden, you not there. <laughs> yeah, with Linden, just give him Sigurd and then momentum on top of his 100% crit Thor on Tome, and then all of a sudden you go from not killing. To yeah. not killing. You, you can crit. <laughs> no, yo, with momentum, you can probably kill, but you can only kill enemies that are like 15 tiles away from you. <laughs> <It's very limited. laughs> so Linden has to run into the middle of everyone else and then just dies anyway. I, ironically, yesterday missed a kill on like a group of enemies with, uh, I think, uh, Anna, Mage Knight, Override, Levin Sword, because she was too close to the enemies. She needed to be further away <laughs> to get the kills. Oh, man. And un unfortunately, this isn't like. Path of Radiance, where you can just kind of wrap them around in a big circle where they start doing spirals to run into the enemy. Oh, that'd be great in no. a game with momentum. I came close because oh. I had a, I had Fram with the Obstruct Staff. I could have added some Ice Tiles to make her go longer, but I needed six <laughs> more movement, and I was not, I couldn't reach that with the Obstruct Staff alone. But yeah, you can't do that in this game, unfortunately. Dang, yeah. should have used uh, drop some core in fog or something so that there would have been enough terrain where you could wrap around it. Oh, maybe that would have been an option if I yeah. had corn at this point, but we're talking like chapter nine here. Oh, something. okay, okay. Okay. Um, Saphir. I, another unit I just haven't used a whole lot. I wasn't super impressed by Saphir when she first joined. Um, I was, at that point, I was still kind of in shock that the brave weapons in this game are so weak. Uh, I was yeah. like, oh, Brave Axe, that's probably good. Like, you join with high strength, you get a Brave Axe. I'm going to assume you're going to, like, two-shot enemies. And then I looked at it, I was like, yeah. wow, FE6 Bartre with Geese's Brave Axe would be, you know, better than this. Because he was, like, forward killing enemies. Now, it also doesn't <laughs> help that our join map has a bunch of enemies on my asthma, so the battle forecast is never going to look too good anyway. <laughs> but I was just <laughs> kind of annoyed with that. Uh, but I have heard of Carasso, who I'm pretty sure is the one who submitted Saphir. Uh, actually used her in his first playthrough and he would like forge the brave axe maybe class change her a little bit give her some resources and then just start two shotting things straight off the bat that's the, that's the kind of linen factor if the unit joins like this with a bunch of sp and you have a bunch of resources you can just make them good like with anything in this game so that probably works out but i've never had the joys of doing that unfortunately i just saw Saphir, and i was like well that's probably some good backup fodder um can get some chain attacks in and then probably just go to the bench um because it's like it's like what you had with Gold Barrier, right? You want to justify using them, but you only get so many deployment slots, especially in Paralogs, so what can you do? You just kind of go to the bench and figure it out. Uh, it was hard enough to make sure she didn't die in the map, because I did kind of mess up a couple times. Uh, but 
she seems all right. I don't know, not enough experience with this one, but she seems fun to make good at least. What about you? Yeah. Very, very disappointing. Because uh, you see like, oh, warrior comes in with a brave axe and you're like, oh yeah, let's go. She's going to chew up all the enemies and steal all my kills. And then you're like, oh no, <laughs> she's not doing anything. <laughs> The Brave Axe is fucking terrible. It does almost no damage on player phase because its might is so low, and it does even less on enemy phase because it can't double. So, oh boy. I don't know. I feel like Fire Emblem is getting to the point where they're overthinking the weapons too much to where Engage is like, okay, all the legendary weapons suck, and the Brave weapons suck, and the Silver weapons suck, but Steel weapons? Steel weapons are on fire. It's like, oh, come on. Give me the good stuff late game. And so you're just seeing this, uh, I guess, I guess Sapphire's old for anime standards. She's probably like 30. <laughs> the game treats her like she's on social security. <laughs> so <laughs> the, uh, you know, so Sapphire is, is cool. And like as a character and it is neat. It's always neat when you have like a character that's introduced super early in the game and then just kind of comes back, even oh, yeah. though it's sort of out of nowhere. Um, so that's you know that's nice, but I didn't I didn't use her. Um, the only brave weapon I really used was uh, the brave sword uh, yeah. on Kagetsu. What I did to make that good is I put one of those huge plus might minus avoid uh, engravings on it because I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna go full maniac <laughs> with it. So you could probably do something with that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also probably not a good sign when you're talking more about a weapon class. Yeah, I was about to say we're going off and the off, character. We're going on and on about Brave Axe because she just joins with one. But I mean, yeah. in order to recruit her, you just have to put someone else next to her. You might as well trade her something else if the Brave Axe isn't good enough, right? Right. <laughs> Again, Wait. this is anti Harkin because Harkin joins with the Brave Sword, and you see him eating, and then you put just an Iron Sword on him, and he just still eats. Yeah. And I don't think Saphir does that. No, I don't think so either. That's the other thing is like you're not gonna put your best weapon on a unit you never really used until you're convinced that they're worth using so mm -hmm. until then they're kind of likely to just have their starting inventory i think and if their starting inventory isn't good enough to make them look good then what are they good like when i first played fp7 i thought gi was really good because i didn't realize you could trade the killing edge to someone else <laughs> you wait you can you, you can trade weapons i never trade weapons in gpa when a character that's just their that's them uh -huh. it's their kid it's true that's that's where i mid on uh, on accounts of lack of experience um, Alright, so Sami is here, which means someone else is here. So, last chance for spoilers while I go grab the character this is actually supposed to be. Yes. And also, now, make sure I'm double checking it. I'm and gonna... Sami goes straight into above good tier. For sure. Just if we were to tier Sami. For sure. Tommy, Sami was the biggest uh, sleeper hit for me. I thought it was going to be annoying to just have like this kind of anime dog follow you around, but then you actually see him. Mm hmm. And you're like, oh no, this guy rules. Mm hmm. All right, so surprise, Mavier was recruitable. The, the funniest thing to be with Mavier that I realized after beating the game is that in the leaks of Fire Emblem Engage, the uh, one of the f first characters we see in one of those support screens was Mavier. <laughs> like it was revealed, it was <laughs> like playable all along. I just forgot about it completely. And then uh, when the game's one of the first trailers dropped, uh, I looked at the four hounds. And I was like, wow, can you guess which one of these is recruitable later? <laughs> Without even thinking about <laughs> the leaks, because it's so obvious when you first see it. Like, he's the only sane one out of the bunch. It's like, yeah, that, that yeah. guy will probably join me. And uh, it'll be totally believable. Mafia yeah. for... Like... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, in a, in a game that's like all about just doing everything that Fire Emblem's already done, who on earth could be the Camus of this game? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then, um... I mean, Engage tries to make everyone to Camus, right? Because everyone yeah. you kill is like, oh, here comes a backstory. <laughs> here it comes. Like, I didn't die. <laughs> so now let me give you the sob story. And also let me recruit myself. Uh -huh. But I'm going to start green so I can't get an Engage ring. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, game. Okay. Anyway, Mavier. <laughs> yeah. The thing with Mavier is he obviously suffers from all the problems the Hounds have with regards to feel um, and, and story. Because And then the other problem with Mavier is that he has like the least lines out of all the Hounds for a while. Literally all he says, I feel like, during the first 14 plus chapters is, I have heard your orders, I will do the orders now, I will do what you say, understood, stuff like that. He's like a robot almost, he's very, very boring. And then only when um, other spoilery character is on the squad, does he start really interacting and saying more than just that, delivering his backstory. 
And I feel like the game could have just spread out the stuff they wanted to say at the end over the course of more chapters, and it would have been way more appealing to me. I think that mm -hmm. delivery could have been much better, and I think that would have made Mafia a lot better as well for me. Um, I'm not super good at, you know, how to improve a story, but do you think that makes sense? I, I think that makes sense. Uh, I do think Engage generally has a problem of, like, exposition dumps. And I think even characters are, like, guilty of this, where... A lot of people, Mavier especially, just does not get a personality until right around the time he betrays. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a huge dump of, of dialogue. It's like, oh my god, mm -hmm. this is way too much right now. For sure. And then as a as a unit with Mavier, um, one annoying little habit that Engage has, I don't remember which other games do this, is they have units join but not in the prep screen, but like right after. So it's just slightly more inconvenient to give him some better tools if you feel like what they have is not good enough and you can't give him skills or anything like that. So he's like right there as a green unit during the prep screen and you see his inventory and you see his skill, uh, which by the way also spoils that he's recruitable, but I was again dumb enough not to notice. Um, and so you have to, in order for Mavier to get some items, you have to like move a leader next to him and convoy him some weapons or have someone else sacrifice inventory space for it. It's just slightly too inconvenient for me to bother. So I would... Uh, so that means that Mavier has a starting inventory, and again, if it's not an amazing starting inventory, it's he, his stats better carry, and he was fine at fighting some things here and there. I think he joins with like a heavy silver great lance or something, and then a flame lance, which is surprisingly good because he's somehow magically adept, and so I would like kill a couple armor knights here and there. But the flame lance is just the worst version of the Levin Sword in this game, unfortunately, so it just kind of is heavier and I think weaker as well. So it's just kind of doing stuff and occasionally doing a physic because he can use staves somehow. Like, he has some nice boons about him, but he's never going to be super impressive. The funniest thing to me about Mavir, like, that alone might actually put him in good feel for me because it's just so hilarious, is when you get to the final chapter and you're, like, chilling on the terrace and you're like, oh, I don't know about facing the final dragon, Sombron. And you go to the terrace, you can either go to the final chapter or you can check the top something units deployed. And, mm -hmm. or the top pairings, and then it's like <laughs> the top 13 is like a bunch of common pairings, like Alir, Marth, and um, Lin Alchrist, and a bunch of that, that. And then somewhere down low there is just Mavir. No emblem, just Mavir. A lot of people just like, <laughs> take the extra deployment slots and just throw Mavir on there with no emblem partner, because they haven't had the time to build up you know, a relationship with Mavir and experiment with him, so they just deploy him because he has the best stats out of all the units on their bench. So he's just solo for life, basically. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> I find that it's great. It's very sad. So, was that what you did with Mavir as well? I put I put a ring on him because I had the... From having the Tiki ring, I just had oh. an extra one lying around. So. DLC helps, yeah. Yeah, DLC helps because then you have too many rings yeah. for your deployment slots. Um... Like, forget 400,000 extra gold. Just give me an extra deployment slot, please. <laughs> um, for me, Mavier's best thing is not even something that happens at the end. It's something that happens before he even is recruited, which is that he's one of the funniest bosses in the series to me oh, in yeah. the map that Saphir joins. Yeah. Because he warps enemies at you. Multiple. We're talking about magically adept. Every turn, he uses the warp staff and just sends another, like, great knight at you. And it's like, oh, this is... This is really funny. I'm getting really mad right now, but this is really funny. Yeah, when it happened to me, I was I didn't get mad. I was just like, all right, I deserve that for not checking his inventory and realizing what he can do, yeah. especially with Micaiah's AOE effect uh, yeah. on those great knights, because I was like, oh, shit, that's funny. It's like, I looked at the map, I was like, this is going to be easy. Like, I just have to avoid fighting enemies under Miasma, and I'll be fine. And then suddenly, Mavir's like, uh, how about some of this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... which, I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't blame you for that, because unless you're playing, like... FE7, PvP, when do enemies ever warp? Yeah, Thracia. Yeah. Like, I, I actually just played a tiering saga map where they do that. Like, just did. Yeah. There's like there's a recruitable character uh, in a corner of the map, and she warps enemies at you only one by one, but still. And then the warps, she's recruitable, so the sooner you get to her, the more warp snaps you get back. So you better make sure that you get to her ASAP. And also, mm -hmm. there's no way for her to prevent the warps from you know, killing your units, because her warp has infinite range. <laughs> so you just get, like, <laughs> brave crossbow enemies hitting your dancer yeah. for there's nothing you can do about it it's hilarious yeah. uh, Mavier comes close though because he gets multiple enemies that are all very dangerous individually so again um, this game does a good job of making funny map design around the emblem rings 
And he, uh, I don't know, Mavier is like, he just sort of fits into this old time, like, kind of late game pre-promote that's just kind of all right. Mm -hmm. Like, you can drop him in there. He's going to fight a couple enemies. He's never going to do great, but never going to do all that bad, which feels functional and functional is sometimes not the most exciting no he's also he's not a super exciting design either like he kind of looks like sort of looks like just Dussel at home he's just a, a little bit like this is, yeah he just a, looks like a guy yeah they decided they needed a knight and so they made Moth here he's yeah. just like almost like a fire Emblem ai it was like all right this is the knight character <laughs> like they need to fill the knight slot i don't know if he's or bad enough to feel bad but maybe he does just because of the all the promise the four hounds have in this story. Yeah. Uh, but he does have like a lot of funny interactions like the ones we mentioned. I'll throw him a mid. Yeah. I think they, they, they yeah. it kind of cancels out the bad, but he doesn't really feel good enough to go in. Yeah. Is okay. it is it a good is it a good thing that the two things we like the best about him are things that he does not ever do? <laughs> it's just things in the menu <laughs> or things he does as an enemy? Yeah. That's not a great sign, is it? Maybe he's probably if we're talking just as a unit, how fun they are to use strictly then he's in bad feel. But the other factors, yeah. I think we can, you know, count them in. All right, so, staff great knights, kind of cool. Yeah, sure. that's true. Uh, I, that's all the engaged characters that we had submitted. I asked my patrons, hey, this is going to be an engaged style um, unit field video. But if you don't want to submit engaged units, then you can submit others, and that's why we tiered uh, Ross, Bantu, Charlotte last time. We're going to do Sumia and uh, Donald now. Uh, but there were a bunch of units that were not submitted that I was surprised were not in there, like Ivy, uh, Alir. Uh, Fogato, uh, Panets, but hey, there's always mm -hmm. future episodes. But I guess for now, we can uh, finish off with two Awakening characters that were submitted, uh, Sumia and Donal. Uh, Sumia, I really enjoy using, but that's because I make it easy for myself by just pairing Frederick to her, and then she gains, she patches up all her weaknesses and just becomes Flying Frederick almost. It, it, she can't even be Flying Frederick if you just fly over to someone, switch to Frederick, and then just have Frederick attack with plus four speed. That feels pretty unfair, too. So in that sense, for me, Sumia is very good. Objectively, that's a terrible way to do that, because Frederick makes anyone nearly invincible, and I don't even play a Lunatic either. So that's a way to make everyone viable. But, you know, this is unit feel, so I can be that unfair and say Sumia good. Uh, also, Gil Force is hilarious in Awakening, because you start to see enemies not as you know, an enemy that must be defeated or a problem or an <laughs> obstacle, but they're just like a springboard for you to just use to get further into the map and, you know, maybe kill the boss on a kill boss map. And you, the fact that you can only do that because there's an enemy in the middle that's helping you to get there, to me, is just super hilarious. And, um, yeah, I just really enjoy getting Sumia to do that. And then also passing Gil Force to someone else who can then also do that. Or use pair up to make two units with Gil Force bounce between multiple enemies until finally landing at the boss and saying, haha, I have one turn to map using these mechanics that I have abused. I am very smart. That's, uh, I like saying that to the game. And then, yeah. sure, you're weak to arrows, but if you can bounce around the map like that, or even when you have flyer utility period, you can just play around it. Just play better Lamau, don't get one shot. Easy, best unit fuel. To me, a good. What about you? Yeah. <laughs> Gale Force is funny. I I've never used it but everything I've heard just seems like it turns Fire Emblem into a platformer. Where it's just... <laughs> <laughs> You're just leaping from spot to spot. Um, I know you get Gale Force really late, kind of, but it also doesn't matter in Awakening, because if you have someone you want to do it with, you can just sort of start the EXP, like, bullet train right from the beginning. Because you have infinite levels and infinite enemies because it's Awakening. Yeah. Um, so... I don't know. I've I've always enjoyed Sumia, but I've never turned her into one of the just uh, monsters that you pretty much have to do uh, in Awakening. But flyers and pair up. It is interesting that you can get like a flyer and then just they don't have flaws, <laughs> like because all you do is stick Frederick on it, or you make a flyer that can just fly, you know, Frederick or Armor Knights or anyone you want all over the place. Uh, I don't know. Awakening has cool systems, and, and Sumia definitely benefits a lot from it, from starting in a good class that really takes advantage of all the silly things in Awakening. Yeah. So, pretty good. Mm -hmm. I will say, if there was a detract detracting factor for Sumia, I guess there'd be a couple. Uh, one of them is that uh, she's, like, 
somewhat canonically Krom's wife, and people get really upset by that. So talk about <laughs> Somia usually results in a, people arguing in the comment section somewhere. And the, the two is that getting to go first for her, particularly, I know it's not an instant thing, not at all. It's actually kind of a long grind if you're trying to keep up a team of units in Awakening, because you do need to be level 15 promoted, and even if you promote at level 10, that's still going to take a long time. It works for Robin, because Robin is veteran, so he just kind of laughs at the XP curve and still gets like 10 XP mm -hmm. per kill or 15 XP per kill, even when he's massively overleveled. Suma doesn't have that luxury, so for her it's like a late game thing, unless you're grinding. But I did grind in my last playthrough, so <laughs> again, personal unit fuel. Um, doesn't apply to me, L, ratio, etc. Um, but... We all know that Awakening, the, the funniest way to play it and the most comfortable way to play it is not to bother with a massive team, but just use a couple units and make them massively powerful. I think that'll come up in a moment with Donald. Uh, <laughs> your experiences in particular. Uh, I think that's when units get much more fun to use in Awakening because then you're just destroying entire sides of the map. And no matter how low your XP game might be, if you're killing like one half of the map and another unit is killing the other half, you're getting half of the experience that's available. And that's still going to get you a level every chapter, a minimum. And so you get to you get to Guild Force eventually, and then Awakening has a lot of maps to go through. Like you have like twenty something story maps and all these paralogs. So you'll make it eventually, and you can time it in a way that you still get Guild Force for a significant portion of the time. And when you have it, the unit field just shoots through the roof for me. But even if she didn't have it, like you said, she has a lot of pros um, about her that I think would make her still good feel. But the Guild Force is just a cherry on top for me. So. Yeah, there you, there you have it. Is that is that all we have on, on Sumia? That, that's all we have, but I'm also, like, ravenously, like, <laughs> biting it, wanting to talk about Donald. All right, so. all right. I'll let you go first on Donald if you want to. I'll let you go first okay. on Donald. Okay, so, so Donald is, like, absolutely peak uh, early game est. You know, you look at everyone that's come after Mozu and Cyril and Jean and whatnot, and, like, they just, they just, they're Donald tryhards. Mm -hmm. They can't do what he does, so... Um, everything about Donald is really funny. His recruitment is hilarious, uh, for one thing. I love that they are like, you have to get a level on him. If you want him, show you're willing to put up with the absolute nightmare that is leveling him up. <laughs> I can't think of any other character in the series that's like that. I think it's a unique recruitment. Sounds um, like it, yeah. Yeah. So, the last time I beat Awakening, Donald was the, um, the hard carry. Um, which is probably not unique. I'm sure a lot of people have, have done Donald, but what's, what is unique about <laughs> Donald is that, uh, he has a base of 11 luck and because of aptitude, he has a 100% luck growth. <laughs> now that doesn't matter a whole lot early on until you realize that all you have to do is send him through mercenary, get arms thrift, uh, and then by pairing him up with Olivia, because you don't need a dancer, you just need Donald. <laughs> so just put Olivia on it. You can override his luck cap to get his luck to 50, which with Arms Thrift means he will never consume <laughs> weapon uses. So then you go and get one of the weird spot pass weapons or get like a glass axe or something, and you just max forge it all the way, all the hit, all the might, all the crit. You just spend all your money on this one weapon, <laughs> you put it on him, it will never consume any of its uses. In my run, I used a. Uh, Ocean's axe, it was basically just the Vuj, uh -huh. just max forged, and he never used any of it, and he cleared the last five maps entirely by himself, without me even having to mess with his inventory, because he's like, I don't need that, thank you. Infinite use weapons are effectively <laughs> always fun, and this is not even an infinite use weapon, it's an effectively infinite use weapon, which is funnier. Yes. Cause... Yeah, you've, you've taken a three-use weapon and made it infinite. <laughs> That's great. I remember having like a 90% arm strift uh, character and I would like fight a group of enemies and see how long it would take for, him to, for them to break it, which is always a funny experience. Yes. That's great. Did you also have like soul on him so he would just not die, I assume? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of yeah, course. no, he just wouldn't die. I mean, if he got hit, I mean, remember, he has a 70% speed growth and 100% luck growth. Yeah. So he's not getting hit anyway. And a 105% HP growth. Yeah, I was fantastic. about to say, from my experience using Donald, his stats are... His growths are better than most units, but most of his stat gains has kind of come from the fact that he gets a second seal, and he's a pretty natural user of it, so the unit just gets extra levels. And then his class base search is awful, so it looks like the second seal 
is doing more work than the actual level ups that he's getting uh, at first. Uh, but like you said, his growths are still like massively good with aptitude. And I've noticed particularly his HP pool is really fun. And we all know in, in Unit Fuel, big numbers in general do a great job of communicating uh, or getting you know your your dopamine going, right? Yeah. And then every time you go to Donald to move him to a different spot of the map because some enemies didn't die to him last turn, you get to see that massive HP pool go around with him. You have this, this little green U um, near his unit sprite. That probably also helps, right? It's like it, it gives a feeling of safety. That he's like, yeah, I'm gonna get this done. Even if I even get hit, it'll be like a quarter of my HP max, and I'll just heal back up with soul. A little extra thing. And then, in general, I mean, we've discussed Zero to Hero before. I think for Donald, it works particularly well because the whole process is fun and the whole game is kind of built around it. You would think the worst part for Zero to Hero is when you're training them up at first, but if you're the person to use Donald, you're probably ready for that and even enjoy that kind of thing. And so you get to see him level up his stats everywhere with his amazing growth. And that process mm -hmm. alone is fun. And then when he's good, this whole game is basically Juggernaut Central with the maps basically just being here, go have fun with your broken units. And that part is also fun. Uh, at some point, it gets a little old sometimes because you're like, okay, I just wish the game was over already. I'm just moving Donald to place to place. But yeah. if you enjoy that kind of thing again, then this is the perfect feeling unit. And I've, I've done it before. I greatly enjoy using Donald. So I think even if it was made for me, I probably have to give put him in good just for you because of how much you've enjoyed yeah. using him. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of. I mean, just from uh, for an efficiency audience, I think it is very funny and frustrating. I would imagine to watch someone just be like, "Okay, we've got Donald. I'm going to stick Frederick on him as a backpack." Mm -hmm. um, and then also, I love all of his crit quotes. Him like killing the final boss, just screaming, "Yeah, come on, Bounty!" <laughs> And just annihilating him. It's great. It's so it's so wonderful. That is great. Um, Donald good. I was oh right. Uh Frederick backpack is also nice of him because it means if you make a mistake like a dumbass, uh he doesn't instantly die like with anyone else as a backup. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he's like Frederick I think stops him from getting doubled and also gives him the bulk to not get O code. It's a pretty rare combination for base Donald to yeah. not have those things happen to him. Yeah. Uh, the amount of archers you have to box in yeah. for Tunnel. I think it's one or two. <laughs> it might depend yeah. on the difficulty or something, but I think usually it's uh, you can get by with one or two archers. If it's if it's just about getting his level to recruit him for whatever reason, then it's I think one is sufficient. But if you're training him, you better keep all the archers you can find. They're, they're resources now. <laughs> they don't know it yet. I think then you go get the rescue staff from that map, and then you rescue him over to go fight the boss, too. <laughs> That's over ambitious because when I play Awakening, I'm playing on my actual 3DS usually because emulating uh, or Nintendo PC Awakening doesn't always go very well. Uh, oh, but if I play on 3DS, it's fine. But that means I don't get my precious save states. I mean, Mecha's turn wheels. Yeah. And so if he misses the boss and the boss is like, yeehaw, crit with gamble, then he's kind of dead. So I would usually skip the boss and just find the next archer <laughs> instead. <laughs> just pinning every archer you can find. All right, get it. Yeah. But I, I mean,. He just needs to get the 10 and then second seal from there. You yeah. never have to do it again because once you get the, right. the second seal, he's just fine on his own. He's probably going to be better than half your units. And yeah. yeah, you could do that to other units, but they don't say ding, 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 ding as much. So why would you? They don't. Well, actually, they kind of do because in Awakening. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, th th that's Awakening what, is like perfect level ups all the time. That's, that's what fascinates me about Donald because even within Awakening with its insane growth, he still stands out a little bit by having slightly better growth than everyone else. It still feels notable yeah. like how much yeah. better he grows. I mean, that 105% HP growth means that, like, three or four times throughout the entire game, you'll get plus two HP. There and is that just, just feels good. There's just something about 100 and 100 plus growth that just really works for me in, that, in those yeah. kind of cases. It's like, re guaranteed return on investment on XP? Like, sign me up. That works for yes. me. Even if it's just a point of HP, like, who cares? It's still funny. Yeah, it's not the Shadow Dragon thing of, oh, yeah, I just got, I'm on hard five. I just got Kane leveled up plus skill. <laughs> God, I hate that feeling. Well, I think we're about done with this edition of Unit Fuel this season. It's been a fun feeling. I think Engage overall probably does pretty well on the Unit Fuel tiers. I mean, we put like a bunch of units on them on the top part. Uh, the most units in the mid are people that we just haven't used, really, is what it comes down to. That's what most of the reasons... That's most of the reasons why people here are in mid. And then Bad Fuel... I mean, again, I would move up Anna now after doing this. I'd probably yeah. move up one of these others too if I actually use them. So, I don't know. It's a pretty good feeling game. I guess the, the voice yeah. acting really does a lot of work, right? 
It does, except for the lack of uh, level up quotes. Oh, true. That does hurt. Yeah. yeah. They should put everyone in bad feel for that. Mm, yeah. I'm gonna, that's that's all I work, though. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Well, there's eh. no copy. There's no highlight and drag. <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, thanks everyone for listening, watching, and feeling with us. Bopper, thank you so much for joining for another season. And uh, hope well, thank you for you. having me. No problem. And we'll feel you again in the future. Goodbye. <laughs> See ya.